I think the only way to sum up this episode is the wait was worth it. We had an extra day wait as the material wasn't given to streaming sites until a bit later, even though it aired in Japan yesterday. Obviously, they didn't have the material as quick, so obviously some production issues in the background, but damn, it didn't show in the quality. That chase scene on the motorcycle as they're going down through the subway underground mall that popped off, and despite maybe a couple of questionable moments, I mean, you don't just get a boy to wake up early on a Monday morning to see some zombie farting up a storm. That was that was not what I needed to see, but they more than made up for it with the Mile High Club experience. So, our boys, they write down on the list what they want to do, you know, stand-up comedian, some extra fun little things to do, and one of the... Uh, items on our boy Akira's list is to basically join the Mile High Club. He wants to wine and dine a flight attendant. And I'm like, you know what, boy? Respect. But how likely is it that you're going to find flight attendants in the middle of the zombie apocalypse? I was thinking maybe they go to the airport, hope maybe there's some in the cabins or something of the planes. And because of a series of unfortunate events, they get trapped in a department store, or whatever you want to call it. They end up finding three of them. And to see the difference in style, to see the difference in personality and charm, our one boy, Kensho, Ken is literally pulled from Grand Blue. He's one of the characters who just is absolute bros with his bro, but most importantly, he's got game. He not only succeeded where Akira fails, I mean, just the way our boy fails. Let me just make this clear. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you actually want to make a move on someone, you especially if they're in emotional stress, you don't ask if they have a boyfriend. You just show kindness and compassion and the rest will figure it out itself. But his dumbass literally said that and oh boy, the zombie apocalypse, despite the smiles on our main character, I mean, he's lost two crushes in the span of just a sh few short episodes. But damn if it isn't great content for the anime. Full live reaction to episode 4 of that ZOM 100 greatness is available on my Patreon. If you would like to see my full uncut thoughts, I actually go speechless there for a couple of minutes when I see what type of fart transition they do, so it's over there if you're interested. Now... I would say out of the four, this is probably the best episode. They definitely nailed the blend of goofy, almost vacation to the harsh reality setting in. Because when you start an episode off with them up on the rooftop, we got the flat screen, we're gaming, we're cooking up some barbecue, right? You know, when you think of zombie apocalypse, you think of rationing your food, rationing everything. But they got electricity still seemingly, they got fresh water, they got all the food they can want. This is literally vacation, and I love the difference of just whenever we see other characters, right? It, whether it's, you know, the first beer run where our boy's coming back and he's like, hey, I couldn't get you this, but you want to get drunk, and then they're just dead. Like, we don't even need to see their bodies, we just know they're dead in that apartment. But this moment is way better because... You have four characters in this department store. You have three flight attendants and a older gentleman who I wasn't really sure what was going on. I didn't think he was bit at all. I just thought that he was just extra scared, extra depressed. Maybe he was missing his family. And I love the fact that when they barge in, you just have this shot that's so perfect. Like, basically, like, what the hell are you so excited for? Like, why are you so happy? Like, this is the harsh reality that it is the end of the world and at a moment's notice they're going to die. It doesn't matter that we're great. We have all the food and all this we need this isn't a life that they want to live. And I really like how they never let it go depression to the point where an entire episode is heavy. Rather, it's the right moments, right? We're seeing them basically in an action movie, jumping, doing wheelies, explosions behind them, all so they can get an extra big TV, which to their credit, they did get by the end. But then you just see it from their perspective and the way they naturally make them kind of like let their guard down and have a little more fun is they get drunk together, right? And I like the fact that they never let this show go too hard in one direction and they somehow blend a zombie story in a way that I really can't find myself comparing to because there's comedy moments about this where I can be like, oh man, that could have been pulled from Shaun of the Dead or something like that. But it's the overall blend of everything that you have to admit ZOM 100 hit a sweet spot of something you really can't find yourself comparing, and I appreciate starting this episode off on the rooftop with 
a decent sized flat screen, them talking about the bucket list, what they want to do before they die, and then you end it with an even bigger TV, but he, him feeling a little off, Akira feeling like he's not really happy, to then writing down like, I want to find my dream, I want to find my childhood dream, and that's where the smile comes back. It's very interesting about the direction this story takes, because it's all about someone being a workplace zombie, escaping that zombie lifestyle because a zombie outbreak occurred, and while the sunshine and rainbows and smiles can't last forever. If the zombie apocalypse truly does last for the rest of these characters' lives, eventually electricity is going away. Eventually modern plumbing is going away. The food and everything. Like, eventually that happens, but by not really making that seem like a threat or an issue for the main characters we're following right now, we get to have situations where they unironically can talk about whining and dining a flight attendant and then in return finding flight attendants where one does get lucky and he does bone where, uh, well, the other has to watch the girl who has a boyfriend but honestly they had a nice little connection there going get absolutely brutally killed. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen out of any zombie media, I've never seen a woman get drunk, pass out, and as the zombie's clawing up her wayside, her thinking like, nah, I'm not in the mood for that, get bit like that. I, I've never seen that, I have to admit, I've never seen that Zom 100. I don't know if I want to say respect, I don't know if I want to say what the hell, we'll just leave it at that. But that was one hell of an episode. I mean, I was confused on how they are going to bring the TV back. Like, initially when they were driving, I was like, okay, why don't you get a car, right? Like, I mean, this feels like you're trying to go to Costco and you're, you're in a smart car. Like, that just ain't going to work out, bro. But I have to admit, honestly, this might be their most impressive feat. The idea of Ken, like, kind of bouncing it and then, like, it leaning up against the driver is kind of brilliant. And I'm sure some people have done just that, but there's probably way more accidents and broken TVs that have tried it then succeeded, but still, leave it to the zombie apocalypse to let these two just completely go wild and have their carefree adventure, and at least someone got some action this week. Well, technically two people got action, but uh, the uh, drunken flight attendant maybe didn't get the action she was hoping for, let's just uh, put it like that. I mean, really, the more you watch of Zom 100, the more you just have to say, what the hell even is this show, but goddamn is this not one of the freshest takes on a zombie zombie series ever. And honestly, the more I watch this, the more excited I am to watch the live action, because I just want as much ZOM 100 as I can get. And this has been a very, very good show, good episode here, probably the best episode. They definitely popped off production-wise, like that initial him like goggling up and then doing the big jump, the slow-mo, the exaggerated animation. Some of the zombie lunge attacks were really well done. It just felt like a damn fine, damn polished episode, and I'm so excited to see where they're gonna go, because we're only a month into this show, and in a way, it just feels like it's getting better the more we understand these characters, the more characters they, that get introduced. Obviously, the ending's still foreshadowing some big busty beauty, so we'll see where that goes, but let me know what you thought of this episode of the uh, Mile High Club, and what did you think overall? Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more Zom 100 greatness to the channel. Like I mentioned, full live reaction to this bad boy is available on my Patreon, and hey, while you're there, you also get a video shout-out. So today, we have Steel Water, Xeno, X, Nico, Steven Thomas, Trap Senpai, and Subject 3. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.